Hey there, lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here, and today I have another incredibly exciting news update. This one I wasn't expecting to see so soon. It was only a few weeks ago that we got the confirmation from Sony that the PSVR 2, or well, we don't know what it's called yet, but the next generation virtual reality headset was indeed coming, not this year, probably 2022 at the earliest, but that was still huge news and very exciting, and now only a few weeks later, here they are showing off the controllers that we're going to be using and not just like, well, okay, we should keep in mind these are all subject to change or whatever, but they don't look like prototypes. They're not like two move controllers sellotaped together, two glowing balls on each end or whatever. These look legit. These look very comparable to what you see on rival headsets. So they announced this on a blog post. So I think we just jump into the blog post and learn everything we need to know about these new next generation virtual reality ps5 controllers and first things first i mean just look at them i mean i know they, they look very similar to what oculus have or whatever but they still look unique as well they say that themselves they call it an orb design so i guess we'll just read shall we so stronger immersion with adaptive triggers haptic feedback finger touch detection and more now we suspected adaptive triggers were definitely going to be in there and same with haptic feedback both of those things are like a huge success with the DualSense controller on the PS5. So it makes a lot of sense that they're bringing that to PSVR 2 with their controller. Now what is interesting is that finger touch detection is there. This was suspected because we've seen patents of it in the past. But Sony have like a million patents of all kinds of crazy things. Not everything goes on to like make it into the finished product. So it is pretty cool to see this confirmed that yes, it will have finger touch detection, at least in three fingers if I'm reading this correctly, but we'll get into it. So this is coming from my new favorite guy at Sony, Hideaki Nishino. This guy knows all about the virtual reality. He is the senior vice president of platform planning and management over on PlayStation. Following the recent reveal of our next generation virtual reality system for PS5, I'm excited to unveil more details about the new controller that will play a critical role in providing gamers with the VR experience we're working to deliver. Our new VR controller speaks to our mission of achieving a much deeper sense of presence and stronger feeling of immersion in VR experience. So far, so, you know, waffly, businessy type buzzwords and whatever. It will build upon the innovation we introduced with the DualSense wireless controller, which changed how the games feel on PS5 by unlocking a, way, a new way to tap into the sense of touch. Now we're bringing that innovation to virtual reality gaming. And here we've got another look at us here. I'll go into all the pictures in detail and when we're finished reading, just to zoom in and get all the, the juicy, juicy details. So first things first, design. Let's talk about how it looks and why it looks the way it looks. The first thing you'll notice with our next gen VR controller is the unique design. And I stop right there just for a sec because they keep saying next gen VR controller or next gen VR. They're not they're not saying PSVR2. So I'm not saying it won't be called PSVR2, but it sounds like they're not themselves committed to the name PSVR2. Maybe PSVR2 is a bit too much of a mouthful, I don't know. So just be prepared for the possibility that it won't be called PSVR 2, it might be called something completely different. First thing you'll notice is the unique design, which takes on an orb shape that allows you to hold the controller naturally while playing with a high degree of freedom. There are no constraints with how you're moving your hands, providing developers with the ability to create unique gameplay experiences. According to this post, the, the way they're designed, the orb design, this is done to allow you to move your hands freely. I'm not sure how that works in like, you know, does that mean like letting go and then it can rest on your hands, if you know what I mean, without falling to the ground? Is that what that means? Or is it just, you know, the way it's ergonomically designed, you've got a better, wider range of motion with this or something, you know? We also designed the new controller with great er ergonomics in mind. So it's well balanced and comfortable to hold in each of your hands. That is important for it to be well balanced because if it's too front heavy or whatever, it can Put, your, put a bit of a strain on your wrists or something like that. So maybe that shape is like, it helps center the balance in the palm of your hand rather than towards the front of the fingertips or whatever. So that, you know, less strain on your hands, which means you can play for longer and enjoy it for longer. We applied learnings from testing users with a range of hand sizes, as well as the decades of insight from controllers across all platform, PlayStation platforms. The result is an iconic design that will change how VR games are played. So hopefully that's somewhat reassuring to people who have maybe very large hands or very small hands. 
They seem to have, you know, tested this on a range of hand sizes and it seems to suit all. There's some people out there, Shaquille O'Neal, for example, his hands are probably not even going to fit in this thing, but what can you do? We get another look at it, but we'll go into that in a, in a few more minutes. I'm excited to look at it, just to admire it, you know? So next thing after design is the features exciting stuff. The new VR controller enables players to feel and interact with games in a much more visceral way. There are several features, including key features from the DualSense controller, which match our vision for what next generation virtual reality games can be. So point number one, adaptive triggers. Each virtual reality controller, so both left and right, include an adaptive trigger button that adds palpable tension when pressed, similar to what is found in the DualSense controller. If you've played a PS5 game, you'll be familiar with the tension in the L2 or R2 buttons when you press them, such as when you're drawing a bow to fire your arrow. When you take that kind of mechanic and apply it to virtual reality, the experience is amplified to the next level. So that's number one thing. I'm very happy to hear this. Very excited. Adaptive triggers. They're one of the coolest things about the DualSense controller on PS5. The more of that, the better. Next point, haptic feedback. So the new controller will have haptic feedback optimized for its form factor, making every sensation in the game world more impactful, textured and nuanced. When you're traversing through rocky desert or trading blows in melee combat, you'll feel the difference, magnifying the extraordinary visual and audio experience that's so central to virtual reality. So those are the two key things from the DualSense confirmed to be coming into these new controllers. Adaptive trigger, haptic feedback. Next thing is completely unique to this controller. Finger touch detection. So here's what they say about that. The controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the areas where you place your thumb, index or middle fingers. This enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay. So the controller is always going to be aware of where your fingers are basically and your hands on screen will probably match at least in those three fingers i'm kind of confused about why it singles out those three fingers i guess it's not like fully fingers or whatever but it's not fully fingered this enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay so it's interesting that they specifically point out that one use for this seems to be uh, for making gestures with your hands not necessarily a ground breaking thing unless the game you know builds something around that of course but look I'm not like super hyped about that. I mean, it's a cool addition, I think. Maybe maybe when I see it in action, maybe when I see that implemented into a game and utilized well, then I can get super hyped about that. But until then, I'm gonna be like, okay, that sounds like a cool feature, promising feature, I'll keep my eye on this, but right now I'm not super moist about that, it's whatever. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know why I should be crazy moist about that. Okay, next thing, and this is a big one. Maybe the biggest, tracking. We all know the PS Move controller's tracking is garbage. It belongs in 2010. That's where it came from and it should never have come. It should never have come into 2016, but it did. Anyway, let's talk about what the tracking is going to be like on this bad boy. So the virtual reality controller is tracked by the new VR headset through a tracking ring across the bottom of the controller. So what does this confirm? This confirms inside out tracking, which is like the holy grail. The headset is going to have something on us. I don't know if it's going to be a camera or some kind of a sensor on us. That that headset we put on our heads is going to be constantly watching for these new controllers. So we don't have to worry about where we're going to place a camera or if we're in view of us. The camera or whatever sensor it's going to be, not necessarily a camera, but whatever it is, will be on our heads. So that's no longer going to be a, a concern. So that is fantastic news. You can definitely be uh, guaranteed way more accurate tracking when it comes to hand movements and motion control in games. And there's gonna be something on the bottom of the controller, a ring they're calling us. I'm not sure if I can point it out in the pictures or not. We'll have a look later on. But that is what the camera is gonna be watching. I keep saying camera, but I don't know what it is. Whatever's in the headset could be some kind of sensor that's gonna be watching those rings the tracking ring as it's called here which will be across the bottom of the controllers so that is sick that is moist as hell we should all be super super happy that that this is the biggest this is the foundation stuff this is you know the building block stuff all this other stuff is like gravy on top you know but this one right here this is the fundamentals and they need to nail that and it sounds like they're going to nail the fundamentals with this Let's talk about action buttons and analog sticks, shall we? So, the left controller contains one analog stick. The triangle and square buttons and a grip button 
which will act as the L1. And it's going to also have a trigger button, which will act as L2, and a create button, aka, you know, you might remember that as the share button on the PS4. They renamed that as the create button. I'm not too sure why they did that, but it makes no difference. It's the same thing. So, another, f another, f I'm trying not to swear, another holy, f Jesus, I really, really want to say the F word, but I can't. Another big holy grail moment, the analog sticks. Imagine if the move controllers just had an analog stick, how much better would things have been? You know, it would still be pretty bad with tracking, but the analog stick would have helped big time. And now with this, let's talk about the right one before we go on. The right controller contains one analog stick also. The cross and circle buttons, a grip button, another grip button, so that's going to be the OR one. And a trigger button, which is OR2, and options button. The grip button can be used to pick up in-game objects as one example, so not necessarily always going to be forced to use the grip button just to pick up just to grip eyes uh, but it's interesting that they name it the grip button but anyway the big takeaway here is each controller has its own analog stick we got two sticks on this bad bitch that is cause for celebration we're going to be waiting a while for these to come along but man doesn't it feel good doesn't it feel good knowing that we're going to get there now you know there's light in the end of the tunnel grip buttons are interesting it's interesting how they've designated these buttons as grip buttons I guess because of their placement, they're going to make sense. You know, when we look at the pictures in a sec, and we'll get an idea. We'll talk a bit more about that then. So, SIE's product engineering and design teams have collaborated to build our new VR controller from the ground up with the goal of making a huge leap from current gen VR gaming. And it sounds like it will be a huge leap. We're thrilled with the controller we developed. But what matters now is how game creators will take advantage of the features to design the next gen of VR experiences. Prototypes of our new VR controllers will be in the hands of the development community soon And we can't wait to see what ideas they come up with and how the controller helps bring their imagination to life There's still much more to share about the next generation of VR on PS5 on behalf of all of us at SIE We I want to thank you for taking this journey with us. You're very welcome Mr. Nishino Nishino Nishino. Okay, so let's take a look at these pictures then uh, I guess one thing to point out there that is important is that prototypes of these are going out very soon to developers. They said the same thing about the headsets. I would imagine they're going out together, which probably means that the headsets are not yet in most of the studio's hands. The developer, developer kit headsets anyway is what I mean. So let's take a, a closer look at this bad boy over here. So we can zoom all the way in. And you can see a nice little analog stick there. I think that's what stands out straight away on this image anyway. And I guess the PS Home, is it this? I guess this is a button. I don't think they mentioned this as being a button. Uh, but I imagine if you want to turn it on, you probably have to press the PS Home symbol. And then down here is the sneaky little grip button, kind of hidden along the side. And that's why they call it the grip button, because as you can imagine holding that, your finger is going to wrap around and you'll be squeezing it with your index finger. So you'll, you know, you'll be gripping things with it that way, so it makes sense that they call it the grip button. This this image here gives a look at the, both the left and the right up close. And up here we have the create button on the left, the triangle, the square. You can't see the grip button because the, uh, I don't know what you call this. Is this the tracking ring? This part here, I don't know what you call this, the plastic part that goes wrap, wraps around, that's obstructing the grip button. And then over on the right, you can see the options button, another stick, circle, X, and then the same thing again. This will give us a, the best look at the grip button so far. Zoom all the way in. So here's that bad boy grip button. You can see the trigger. Looks very similar to the PS5's DualSense controller. Uh, you can see a USB charging port down here, I imagine. Hopefully they'll sell us like a docking station or whatever to go along with us. So we can store them nice and easily. And uh, man, the design of it just looks, it's almost like it's hard to wrap your head around it looking at it sometimes, like an optical illusion or something like that. So okay, that's pretty much everything we know about these new controllers, everything that was detailed in the blog post. As of right now, I believe that's the only source of information about these things. These things are probably still a long way away, at least a year, you would imagine. So there's a long, long time for us to potentially learn a lot more about these controllers and a lot more about the headset itself. Although now that they've shown off the controllers, I'm kind of anticipating that in the next week, two weeks, next month or something, they might drop the actual headset reveal itself. But the fact that the controllers, that they're showing them off this early, I think is pretty interesting. I don't know if they're just trying to generate interest and hype and get people excited. 
Or does this indicate that maybe it's a bit further along than we maybe expected initially? But keep in mind, these things are all, they're not even in the developers' hands yet. And we know it takes years for developers to make games. So with that in mind, I'm not expecting an early 2022. I'd love if it was early 2022, but I'm still thinking I'm leaning towards holiday 2022, you know, Christmas time, whatever. Uh, that's kind of what I'm expecting right now, but still lovely to have that to look forward to. So that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Before I end the video, let me thank my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keep this channel going. In particular, let me give a shout out to the following top tier soaking wet pumpkins. Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Columbus Thomas the Third, Tradition, Chopped 517, and Crumb. Thank you very much for that support. It is very much appreciated. If you would like to help out over on the Patreon, you can do so. The link will be in the description below. But if not, don't worry. You can help out the usual way with the likes, the share and comments, subscribe and all that shite, that YouTube shite. You know how it is. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my video. You should check out his new music video that he made in dreams with the help of Clever Trev for his upcoming album, which will be out tomorrow as of recording so check that out and i will end the video there thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye for now stay moist petrifying pump